हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल लिटल अंडर रेटेड होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल टुडे वी आर गोना चेक आउट एन अदर वीडियो ऑफ अक्षर और टाइटल एज आई बाय दीज फाइव स्टॉक्स ऑन एफ टी सो लेट सी व्हाट फाइव स्टॉक्स ही टॉक्स अबाउट एंड व्हाट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड इट दैट वाई ही बाय दीज स्टॉक्स फ्रीक्वेंटली ऑन एवरी सिंगल डिप और मार्केट क्रैश will be interesting to see get some to the video Hi everyone welcome to today's video so on today's video i'm going to speak about five of my favorite stocks now let me set some context before i delve deeper into these five stocks first and foremost point this is not an investment recommendation i would not say that you should be buying selling these stocks generally speaking these are my five favorite stocks i keep on aggregating these whenever the opportunity presents itself on this video i am going to help you understand the logic why why do i think that these stocks are very strong why these companies have some kind of a massive moat on top of that i will help you understand some historic context associated with these companies because if you understand the core philosophies of these companies it will give you a lot of confidence in terms of aggregating it whenever the time is right so with that perspective in mind let us kick start the video also a very quick shout out to our sponsors for today which is vested it is an excellent us stock investing platform in case you are considering buying some stocks in the us you could definitely check out vested you can also check some of my portfolios of us stocks in the comment section They They are named West. So let us kick start the conversation. And my first favorite stock is Asian Paints. Now all of us know the standard story that Asian Paints, okay, you know, very good paint company. This that. Okay, I'm not going there. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to tell you why you should be purchasing a stock like Asian Paints whenever the opportunity presents itself. So let us use some historic context and let me show you the technical chart of Asian Paints first and foremost. And what you will notice here is something very very interesting. So the interesting part is that from the start of May to all. most june the stock fell by roughly 21% then after that fall something amazing happened that the stock started to recover and it went up by how much so it went up as of today by almost 35% now please check some of my previous videos i have been saying that i have been aggregating hul asian paints i in fact made a video and here you can see the video also i specifically spoke about asian paints why it is a very good stock now i am not here to declare my win the reason why i am telling you this story is fairly simple that that many a times good stocks are deliberately beaten down by operators then retail investors panic that you know what all the margins have been crushed there is supply chain problem there is inflation problem this problem that problem market share is going away and what they will do they will panic after seeing a 20% fall on a good stock they will sell it and who is going to buy it big fat players are going to buy it and they are going to set in profit there is data coming in which categorically says that in the last 3 4 months retail investors had stopped investing they have even stopped their sips and now the markets have started to run and the retail investors are now let me show you categorically how the news is manipulated again please go back to the date that i was speaking about that the stock started to fall somewhere in early may and it continued to fall till june end so let me show you commentary of two big research houses so this is from hdfc securities that it has maintained a sell call on a stock with a target of 2550 a 17% downgrade what is the stock price today stock price today is 3500 let me show you commentary by one more house so this is from city they had also cut the target to 3470 now the reason why i am telling you this story is fairly simple that please do not believe in the research reports that are coming out please do your own sensible analysis again and please go back to my video on asian paints that i had made during that time there was some panic created about the whistle blower thing and the news article started saying that you know what that this is the next satyam there is this issue that issue so please do not believe in this type of commentary if you see frivolous news please stay away from it good stocks are going to survive you need to go back read the basic reports associated with the company and then take a call whether that stock is likely to perform badly over a long period of time or not If you feel okay holding that stock, then please do not sell these type of stocks. Again, I was there making videos telling all this thing, but I will reiterate this again, and then I will speak about second stock because this exact same commentary is now happening to the second stock that I am going to speak about. But before that, let me wrap up about Asian Paints. I will very quickly take you through the fundamentals of the stock. So, if you take a look at sales, there has been no problem at all in terms of sales. There has been no problem at all in terms of net profit. Then why is it that people panic so much that the stock falls for some random reason by 20% people sell off and go away? 
the reason is that people do not understand why they are entering into a stock in the first place so you need to be smarter in case you want to make money in the stock market and take these type of opportunities and bet heavily so from that context please ask yourself a basic question that hey are sales profits going down the answer was no there was no problem there so what was the dhindura that was going on about asian paints the dhindura was that hey there are like no opportunities for growth for a company like asian paints the inflation is high supply chain disruption has happened okay go to the numbers and check it for example if you take a product wise segment of the company what you will see is that hey the paints business which is the bread and butter for the company that is good there has been no problem with the company even they are getting into home improvement and home decors this is a growth area for the company and even here the sales have been growing there has been no problem in terms of sales growth of the company on top of that if you read some commentary by the management you will find two three very interesting data points and let me highlight that for you so one let us take a look at the acquisitions that the company has done so the company has purchased 51% equity in a company called as weather seal fenestration private limited Now if you google about this particular company it is into home decor and one of the focus areas for Asian paint seems to be home decor market so from that particular perspective this acquisition makes a ton of sense same look at this another company called as Obgenic Software Private Limited now tell me in the comment box i will not give you the answer you have to do some homework now google about this company and tell me in the comment box why Asian paints has invested in this company If you do this basic analysis basic study and stay away from useless news you will make enough money in the stock market So anyways the objective of this video is not for me to tell you that hey Asian paints you missed the opportunity all that stuff nothing like that in fact there is another very good opportunity that I have been speaking about again not an investment advice this is a research point from my side and the second stock that I am very very bullish about this is one of my favorite stock I have built a lot of position in this stock and the stock's name is HDFC Bank Why have I purchased HDFC Bank? I have been speaking about it on several of my past videos, so I will not repeat that commentary. But one key concern has started to emerge from that stock, which has to do with iteration. And these days, right now, in July, August of 2022, if you Google HDFC Bank iteration problem, you will see a ton of articles being thrown at you, where people are just simply trying to convince you that you know what, everyone is going to leave HDFC Bank and join SBI or something. I don't know if that is going to happen but let us systematically try to analyze that issue. So these are the type of articles that you will see that a lot of people are leaving HDFC bank this that and people will just get swayed by these type of news. But on top of that if you actually dig in and look at the details of the articles from a lot of websites you will be able to understand why this issue is happening. Here I am putting a snippet you can pause the video go through it but I will explain you the summary. So what has happened is that in 2021 2022 inflation has been high inflation means that prices are going up which also means that your salary should be increasing this is a basic common sense thing that if mehngai is going up then of course your salary should also go up with mehngai and that is one of the reasons why we saw such high attrition rate with it companies so people were leaving jobs at tcs infosys and joining startups which were paying them a ton of money now this problem will not get segmented only with it this will also seep into other sectors like fmcg banking etc etc and within that entire game hdfc bank also started suffering Now HDFC Bank is a private bank. For example, when you go to SBI, people will find it hard to leave that job because of a lot of cushion that the government provides. But HDFC is a performance-oriented bank. The pressure is more, and there can be hundred different factors. So the important message that I'm trying to give you is twofold. That one, this iteration problem is an industry-wide problem. It is not only concentrated to HDFC Bank. Second key thing, TCS, HDFC Bank, Infosys. If they go and announce that they are recruiting people, do you You really think that youth in India would not want to work with these companies? There is so much of job shortage in India that these companies will not struggle in terms of recruiting candidates in India. That is not going to happen. This is absolutely senseless reason that the stock price will go down. Now additional theories are thrown that you know what? So China and Taiwan war is going to happen, and as a result, the global stock markets are going to crash. Okay, now you some brain. Now you tell me in the comment box how much does the world depend on Taiwan? The answer is unfortunately or fortunately the world does not depend on Taiwan. On top of that do you really think that this is a China Taiwan war? People are stressing so much on war. Destructive war happens between somewhat similar countries. The size difference is so huge the geography of Taiwan is such that it is of less importance to the world. Yes, I am not talking about it from a humanitarian perspective. I am giving a pure economic capitalist view point on it. There has been so much drama that has been created by the US. US is not able to manage its own house and they are jumping into Taiwan China issue. So please don't worry about all these things. These things will get sorted with time. You should be focused on buying good businesses as long as the business looks 
it's good you are good to go then additional point that comes around hdfc bank is that hey, it has like no opportunity for growth so much competition is coming from fintech this that okay this is again a very weak argument and let me prove it to you by taking you to the historic context of hdfc bank and what type of articles were coming in 2015 so these were some of the articles that were coming in 2015 the source is business today so for hdfc bank the biggest challengers include new payments bank such as paytm reliance industries tech mahindra this that okay what impact they have been able to create from 2015 to 2022 on hdfc bank's business or its stock price go back check the history of it so the point is that even the next 10 years so it is highly unlikely that something dramatic is going to happen to hdfc bank yes some kind of negative events can always play out for example the way it happened with icici bank where there was chanda kochar problem that happened and that derailed the progress of the bank for a substantial period of 2 3 years when other banks were progressing then icici bank was not progressing that type of stuff can happen with hdfc also but from a systematic view point in terms of banking there is no bank which is even close or even close second when it comes to hdfc bank now one of the key reasons why that is happening is banking is a regulated industry everywhere but in india it is highly highly regulated rbi is very strict when it comes to fintech companies bunch of other new age startups what not so it is extremely unlikely that there will be massive challenges to a bank like hdfc even 5 7 years from now then comes the natural and final question that okay where is growth going to come from from hdfc bank it is such a big bank already okay so let me show you the growth rate of different segments of hdfc bank and what you will notice is that even now their retail banking segment is growing at 8% and in fact their wholesale banking has grown by 38% this year which has been the highest ever so to say so the point is that growth rate in wholesale has not even stagnated it is still peaking so there is a lot of growth left for a bank like hdfc so some other banks that i am bullish about you can go read it up more i have made videos on it this is just an additional these are not my favorite stocks so some other banks that i am bullish about would be avas finance yes i have already done a video on it and idfc first both these banks are solid if you want i will make a separate video on it now let's move on to stock number 3 which is one of my absolute favorite stocks which is amazon now i have been making videos on amazon again please go and check my videos approximately 2 months back so what has happened with amazon let me show you a very quick snippet here that in the last one month it has recovered by almost 38% and please go and check my videos on this topic i have been buying this stock why simply because of the fact that amazon is an evolving company it keeps on expanding its business mode it is one of the best long term thinking companies right now and i'm so thankful for the recent crash that i got this opportunity to aggregate this stock in bulk because i do not see from this point that it is going to go extremely low the type of shock that had happened to amazon in the first 6 months of 2022 now why am i so bullish about amazon very simple if you just simply take a look at this graphic you will see that year on year year on year there has not even been one year including 2020 covid where their revenues or profits have gone down which is such a massive mode for a company that they are sitting on free cash flows on their balance sheet which they can deploy to acquire new businesses and that is where their growth will come from in the next stage now just to quickly tell you some of the recent acquisitions so here you can check the entire list and recently they have went and acquired even an indian company and this is called as glow rod please check all the type of companies that they are acquiring it will help you understand the focus area for amazon going forward now if you google more about glow rod what it does it's an india company and it is trying to accelerate the entrepreneurial ecosystem in india okay, so basically my hypothesis is that a business like shopify the way it has scaled up in the us something similar is going to happen in india work from home culture is amping up a lot of people are looking for work from home opportunities india's female workforce participation is dismal it is very very low it is half that of bangladesh so what does that indicate it indicates such a great opportunity for companies to come and allow people to work from home and create an ecosystem around work from home economy amazon is trying to do exactly that i am not sure if they are going to pivot this company called as glow rod into that I'm not sure but this is what the direction seems like now you will say that akshat you are speaking about like some random business they have acquired what such a big deal this actually indicates the philosophy and in order to understand jeff bezos's philosophy you need to go back to the 2000.com crisis now 2000.com crash was a massive crash and a very important crash which shaped jeff bezos's philosophy So first and foremost Amazon was active during that time its stock price also got crushed Amazon saw also giant players suffering after that crash for example Yahoo got decimated Yahoo's business is nothing compared to what it was at its peak 
Blackberry's business got crushed after the 2000 crash. So what do you think Jeff Bezos's philosophy would have been because his own company's stock price got crushed by almost 90-95%. His philosophy would have been that you know what that I survived this crash one way or the other but going forward I need to think long term. And this is a very famous quote that I keep on referring over and over again that that Jeff Bezos was asked by university students that hey that we want to build our business and can you tell us that what things are going to change in the future accordingly we will be able to structure our business so jeff bezos told those students that hey don't worry about what is going to change in the business world think about what is not going to change for example customers are going to demand stuff fast they are going to require more options they are going to ask things for cheap no customer is going to come to amazon and say that you know what you are selling this pen for 500 rupees why don't you sell it to me for 999 rupees no one is going to do it right so that's very sensible and that is the philosophy around which jeff bezos has been creating business after business after business and monopolies after monopolies after monopolies and he is after the indian market right now if you want i will create a separate detailed case study on that but for the time being please understand that amazon is a solid company even now i see a lot of upside to that company again not a stock buying recommendation it's a model for any entrepreneur to replicate so this brings me to my favorite indian stock which you would have guessed by now it is hindustan unilever i have spoken so much about this stock that at one point people started saying that hey why do you speak about hul every single day okay the reason is this and you can see it on your chart that it moved by 25% in one single month and if you remember i talked about this channel strategy also that it is going to re enter this channel and guess what it has started to re enter this channel so this was our zone of bulk buying as i spoke about on my previous video a safe stock in fact one of india's most safest stock which moved up by 25% and therefore i was betting on it heavily now in case you are a long term investor in hul you need to understand some salient points about the company number 1 take a look at its price history that it literally moves like this the way index moves HUL also moves in a similar way. Why is that the case? Simply because of the fact that it is an FMCG company. The demand for FMCG products do not go down. It keeps on going up. People in India are upgrading their lifestyle. They are not downgrading their lifestyle. For example, go to a village and in previous generation, if 50% of people used to do datun, tell me in the comment box what is meant by datun. If you are from a village, you will understand that. So 50% of the people would be using datun. But right now, tell me how many people in the villages use datun. very few they would rather use toothpaste so people are upgrading their lifestyle so people are not downgrading their lifestyle this is a very basic thing that we need to understand point number 2 that we need to understand about hindustan unilever is that in this journey of growth how many times do you think it would have suffered through inflation all those different challenges that people have been harping upon over the last 6 8 months high inflation was there in 2008 2009 also so the point i'm trying to drive home is fairly simple that this company is resilient that brings me to point number 3 why is the company resilient because right now it owns brands like horlicks it owns lux fair and lovely and almost 50 well known brands now if you are holding so many of the brands it gives you massive branding power and as a result hul keeps on increasing its prices in fact here is a graphic for you which shows that in one single month hul increased its product prices not once but twice and that was on top of two price increases that had come in the previous 3 4 months so that is how much power hul has when it comes to fmcg products and they have spent billions and billions of dollars in terms of building those products Okay so now comes my fifth and final favorite stock which is Apple computers I see a lot of growth that will happen for this company I have already aggregated it now I am not buying any more of Apple I bought it at the dip and I plan on holding it now why am I bullish about this company very simple I will show you two three graphics to prove my point so number one if you take a look at its profit growth the profits have been growing year on year absolutely zero problem in, in fact in tech companies Apple has one of the highest profit margins just to give you some estimates it takes apple approximately 600 dollars to manufacture some kind of iphone and they sell it approximately at 1400 around so they make up to 60 65% profit just in terms of selling iphone on top of that there is servicing if your iphone breaks and if you have to replace the screen they charge like 40000 rupees to replace that screen so they are like pan singh tomar of business world but yeah on a more serious note one of the reasons why apple is able to command so much prices one number one product innovation they have a lot of cash sitting on their balance sheet 
quickly. They are able to constantly come up with new products. Number two reason is they have been able to build a community that depends on them quite aggressively. Let me show you some data to prove this point. So here is a graphic for you which says that Apple commits to invest almost $430 billion in US in terms of investment in the next five years. And this news is from 2021 when inflation is high, COVID situation has happened, a lot of negative negative thing has happened and hey, here is Apple investing $430 billion like it's been. So this is one. Second key thing, if you take a look at its product suite, what they are trying to build next. Very, very interesting stuff. I keep on reading about tech all day. So this is very fascinating for me also. So first and foremost, if you study electronics, one of the key things that is going to happen in the electronics industry is the augmented reality. Now, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality simply means that let's say that you are playing video games, then those video games will look more realistic. So they are augmenting those video games. And the word of the day today is augmenting. So let me know what does that mean. Now, where exactly Apple comes into the equation? So you can see that So Apple is starting with something already familiar, the iPhone and a new way for developers to build AR apps for the phone. When iPhone 11 becomes available on tens of millions of Apple devices this fall, Apple will immediately have the largest AR platform. So this is big they can release a lot of apps associated with it. AR is still evolving. A lot of projects have already failed in the past. For example, Google Glasses, it was a very big project. It did not work out. But Apple has a transition plan, which is a very solid transition plan. And they are hitting a sweet spot in terms of creating that developer ecosystem. Now, just to understand a little bit more about AR, here is another snippet. You can study the utility of AR by zooming in on this snippet. Now, second thing, which is called as ambient computing, is an area where, again, Apple is focusing a lot. Now, what exactly is ambient computing? It's an extension of Internet of Things. In this, what happens is that every electronic device that you have, it automatically works as per an underlying structure. Just to give you an example, for example, if you're using AirPods and if you're using those AirPods on your Mac and you are sitting in your drawing room, then you use those same AirPods, you go to your bedroom and you have your iPhone there, then your AirPods automatically connects to your iPhone. Now, the hypothesis is that Siri is already there on almost all types of electronics for Apple. That becomes the underlying structure and through that smart homes can be created and a lot of functionalities can be built by using the concept of ambient computing. So I will probably make a separate video on this, but as an investor in Apple, especially a long term investor, there are enough avenues for growth for a company like Apple because they have a ton of money to do R&D around these new novel concepts and keep on introducing more product releases. Mm. Now, the best part about that company is that this is literally an inflation proof company. If you don't trust me, these are the prices for Apple iPhones. They have never come down. For example, if you check this red graph or blue graph or green graph, the Apple iPhone prices generally have been up. Why do we have these crooked curves? Because we have different variants of iPhones. So therefore, you are seeing all this disparity. But generally speaking, the iPhone prices have been going up, up and up. There is no stopping that and iPhone prices are not going to come down. And that happens with every single Apple product. Why? Because they make you dependent on Apple ecosystem and it becomes almost impossible to leave that ecosystem without undergoing a lot of pain. So I hope you enjoyed this video. These are five of my favorite stocks. So I plan on aggregating them on almost every fall. I see long term growth prospects in all of these companies. These are very good companies and despite being big, they will continue to scale new heights. That is my hope. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon. So he discussed a lot of interesting things. Majorly he talked about five stocks, uh, three from Indian market and two from US market. Uh, from Indian market, HDFC, HUL and Asian Paints. Uh, from US, Amazon and Apple. Uh, see, all of them are uh, large cap companies in terms of market capitalization. But uh, there is still a lot of scope of growth in terms of different segments. Uh, the existing segments, existing business segments where they are driving revenue from or the newer segments uh, from which they are planning to uh, either feature in or they have already featured in, they are trying to uh, increase their market sh share in that particular segment. So he has talked about a lot of important things, for example the monopoly and one of the most uh, surprising factors for me. Uh, in this video was uh, that uh, Apple is uh, like really an inflation proof company in the sense the prices of Apple products have never come down specifically the iPhone 
irrespective of the market conditions or inflations or purchasing power parity or or a lot of things that i think is one of the uh, rare things a company could have okay we are going to check out some other videos as well till then please subscribe to our channel and uh, i'll see you in next video till then take care bye bye